Synthesis of alkene. So provide the reactant and reagent you will need to form the following compounds. So in this case, I'm looking at all the compounds and of course they're all alkenes and these are the products that are given to us. So which means we need to figure out the reactant and the reagent. So since we are talking about alkenes as a product, we are talking all about elimination reactions. Okay, so elimination reactions of course are going to be E1 or E2. So in case of E1, you can have a halide uh, for elimination. You can also have an alcohol for elimination. All right. For E2, you have to have generally a halide. You cannot do that with any kind of an alcohol. So um, keeping all of that in mind, okay, then we start looking at our alkenes, okay, the products that we are making. And I'm going to use the retrosynthesis arrow for this, okay, because we are going backward now, okay, in this case. So when you look at this kind of an alkene, the first thing to do is to see whether it's a Zeitzeit product or a Hoffman product. And in this case, this is a Hoffman alkene. So if this is a Hoffman alkene, it means that I am primarily going to look towards E2. So then I have to think about, okay, what are my conditions for E2? So my conditions for E2 are going to be that I need a bulky base and I need a halide. Uh, maybe a secondary halide would work, okay? So I have one, two, three, four, five carbons. So one, two, three, four, five. And then I have a methyl group going over here. So now uh, where should I go ahead and put my um, halide? Because there are three locations for it, okay? So I can put the halide here. I can have the halide here or I can have it here. And these are all places which will give me the product, okay, because these are all close to uh, where I need them to be, all right, not all together, one at a time, okay. So then let's look at all of these ones. So the first bromine that I have here, this is a tertiary halide, okay. So if you have a tertiary halide, then you're probably not going to get a Hoffman product, okay. You're probably going to get um, a Zite saves product, okay, and so then here you have a primary halide. A primary halide will um, probably give you not a very good elimination, okay, because then you need a strong base to access the beta hydrogen over here. And this beta hydrogen is not that accessible because this is a tertiary carbon, okay, on this spot. So it's not very good. And this bromine is completely useless because, yeah, that was, I just put there so that, you know, we can talk about that, but uh, really that will give us an alkene here. So no, you don't need that. Okay. So this one was completely useless. So in any case, we only have two locations. Okay. For this one. So we can write both of them out and then see what conditions we need. So let's go ahead and write the first one. Okay. Which would be then something like this. Okay, so you can use this if you want to. This will not be an E2 mechanism. This will be more like an E1 mechanism. So if you want to do an E1 mechanism for this and still get a Hoffman product um, in this one, then you just need a very small, strong uh, base. Okay, so a small and a strong base will do the, the job because then once you have the um, uh, the carbocation, then it will just go ahead and pick the hydrogen from here. You can also use a bulky base, okay? So, or you can also use T-butoxide. T-butoxide will be a little bit better, okay, than the hydroxide because T-butoxide is bulky, okay? And so if it's bulky, then you are better off with this. Um, and then here is our second halide. And for this one, uh, you can only use a small and a strong base, okay, for this, because you can't use a bulky base over here, because in that case, uh, you will not be able to access this hydrogen, okay? So for this one, you can have uh, a strong base. You will also want heat, okay, as your uh, reagent in there, because the heat will, will cause uh, more elimination, okay, than substitution, because when you have hydroxide, you actually have a small, nice nucleophile going on there. Okay, so uh, which one is the preferred method for uh, making this alkene? I would say the first one is a little bit better. Okay, so if you have two things in your mind, uh, then pick the one that makes a little bit more sense. And this is one of the reasons why you should study with friends because you may think of one synthesis, your friend might think of another synthesis. 
Okay, let's look at the next one. And in the next case, we have an alkene. Now, this alkene is neither Hoffman nor Zeid says. We don't really have to worry about anything um, in this one. All we need to do is find a good halide because a halide will give us a good um, leaving group. And then we just need a nice base. And a good base would be T-butoxide to cause the elimination and that's about it okay for this one so let's look at the last one now in the case of last one we can see that we have um, a Zite saves product excuse me so Zite saves product so Zite saves product means that we have actually very stable alkene to make a very stable alkene um, it's probably an E1 mechanism, okay, in that case. And so if it's an E1 mechanism, then I can very safely use alcohol in presence of an acid, okay. This will be definitely uh, an E1 mechanism. So this is the best synthesis for making a Zite saves product, all right. For the second one, for B, uh, what will be the mechanism, E1 or E2? And honestly, in this one, it'll be more like E2 okay then e1 because uh, cyclohexane rings are uh, pretty floppy and very spacious so you can easily access this hydrogen okay without any problems